Uh, I actually I didn't know until like a half hour ago that I would be asked to give spontaneous remarks. <laughs> so, so let me see what my spontaneous remarks are. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm delighted, as is surely everyone in this room. I remember when LIGO was being discussed and debated in Congress, and it was not clear whether it would get funded, and it took people with great foresight uh, to say, this is something we should begin, even though the technology isn't ready for it, because the science certainly was. And that's the kind of uh, decision-making that, I mean, they hinted to it at the beginning of this press conference, the kind of decision-making that invents a future for whatever is the frontier that's being tapped by that grant money. And uh, also, uh, just by historical reflection, when Herschel discovered planet Uranus, and not shortly, not long after that, he realized that its orbit was not tracking what Newton's laws of gravity would prescribe for it. There was a question about whether Newton's laws would no longer apply at such a great distance. It had been tested for Earth and the Moon and Jupiter's satellites and this sort of thing. And so there was just a little bit of doubt and then someone said, well, let's assume it works, and perhaps there's another perturbing planet out there. And sure enough, the mathematics was invoked, prediction was made, and practically the same night, the assignment was given to an observer in a telescope, planet Neptune was discovered. Now, I, I mentioned this, we all know this, most of us know that story, but I want to contrast that to the fact that Mercury, was also misbehaving. Its perihelion point was processing at a rate that could not otherwise be explained by Newton's laws of gravity. And so, well, we've been down that road before, a planet misbehaving, we're not gonna give up on Newton's laws, clearly, because it's, so, it, it, they're bad ass, really. So, <laughs> so, what, so, we, so we astronomers just invoked a, a missing planet orbiting very close to the sun. You may, may have never heard of this planet. It's called planet Vulcan. Very close to the sun, so that you couldn't really see it, okay? The, in the glare of the sun. People looked during total solar eclipses, still didn't find it, so maybe it's behind the sun or in front. So we, we gave ourselves excuses for why we couldn't find it, but we invoked a planetary mass whose gravity would influence Mercury in just the way we needed to process the perihelion point. 1916 would come along, and Einstein's general theory of relativity actually showed the limits of Newton's theories of gravity. And so here we have, and, and explain the perihelion shift of Mercury for free. Einstein didn't start his day saying that was his goal. And so we dropped Vulcan at the snap of a finger, and so the point is just to, to, to share with you some of the challenges we face on the frontier. Here are two cases where in one case it was another planet, in another case it was an entirely new understanding of the fabric of the universe. And thus was born this quest to fully flush out what general relativity is, how it works, how can we predict it. And if anyone had said at the time of the prediction of gravity waves, oh, why even bother? This will never happen. And yet 100 years feels like a lot to us in our lifetimes, but over the history of the discovery of science, it's not that long. So I, I lay awake at night wondering what brilliant thoughts people might be having today that might take another century to reveal itself in our technologies. I, I also want to highlight that as Martin Harwood wrote in his book, which I recommend for everyone here, Cosmic Discovery. He explores how, when, and where major shifts occur in the field of astrophysics. And he noted without hesitation that the onset of new technologies, new detectors, create abrupt leaps in the field, open entire new branches of investigation. And this is another one of, one of these uh, another such window to the universe that gets open. So 
I, I'm, of course, I'm, like I said, I'm delighted, as is everyone here. I was actually visiting the LIGO Center in uh, Livingston, Louisiana, just a month ago. And by the way, they were all quite hush about this. <laughs> okay, they were all quite, they were all, they were very smiley though, I noticed. <laughs> we had a big smiling at Columbia, right? <laughs> <Can't we? laughs> they were all completely smiley, and I was just stunned at the precision of these instruments. And then I was wondering, if they didn't detect gravity waves, would it be the world's best seismometer? You know, you put it to use as that. <laughs> um, so, uh, and one just final thought here. Uh, general relativity, at the time and for most of the past hundred years, it had been thought of mostly as an obscure thing in the field of physics, until our GPS satellites come online, and then we realize at their elevation above Earth's surface, at the speed they're orbiting, they're affected by relativity twice. One because of their physical speed, another because they're in a different place in the Earth's gravitational well. That accounts for a time correction that has to be introduced. Otherwise, the GPS would give you the wrong location on Earth's surface, drifting by 10 kilometers a day. So that in fact, it's not just some obscure thing that only, you know, that, that physicists had to worry about, it actually has practical applications. So if anyone is asking us about general relativity, tell them it helps them how to find grandma's house from GPS. <laughs> so I'm happy to be, just be a part of this. I, you know, I, I get asked often to reflect on discoveries like this by the press. What I've tried to do is cultivate a relationship with them where if they say, oh, can you tell us about LIGO? And I say, have you interviewed the people who gave their lives to this first. Uh, no, 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 you're here. I said, I'm not talking to you until you talk to these people. Then you can come back to me, and I'll be happy to tie a bow on it. And so I'm, I'm delighted to actually be in the bow tying service of science uh, right here in New York City. And so I'll turn the program back over to you guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.